Similar to the last problem we did, we know that there is a heat exchange from what looks like to be uh, water inside an aluminum calorimeter, um, exchanging heat into uh, solid mercury. So one thing you know is that we have solid mercury to begin with, and we'll, we'll say the specific heat of mercury is 140 joules per kilogram Celsius. Uh, we have the mass of mercury to be 1.0 kilograms, and we have the melting point. Um, so I don't know how to identify that. We'll just say melting point to be negative 39 degrees Celsius. It's placed in a <clears throat> aluminum canister with a mass of 0.5 kilograms. <laughs> and it is filled with water with a mass of 1.2 kilograms. And those both are at a temperature, uh, starting temperature, I should say. So we'll say not at 20.0 degrees Celsius. It looks like that the combination final temperature is going to be 16.5 degrees Celsius. And what we're looking for is the latent heat of fusion for mercury. And I say latent heat of fusion because that's fusion is the energy uh, that it takes to make something from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a solid. So this is what we're trying to find. One of the cool hints we got here is that we have salt. It's not really a hint. They just tell us explicitly that we have solid mercury. Um, it's at a melting point of negative 39 degrees Celsius when it's placed into the calorimeter of warmer water. So that means that there's not going to be any sort of temperature uh, change before the mercury melts. So mercury is going to go under two phases. Um, well, let me go ahead and do the conservation of energy equation first. We have heat being transferred to the mercury in um, from the aluminum canister. And the heat is being transferred out of the aluminum canister and water. So I'm just going to call it water AL. Okay, so that's what it looks like, wall water AL. Okay, so this is the conservation of energy equation. Again, both of these substances are solid or liquid, so they don't have any sort of change in volume. So the only practical uh, equation that goes with this is an MC delta T, or um, when something changes phases, it's ML. Okay, we know that first mercury is going to change phase, and then it's going to rise in temperature to reach some sort of equilibrium happy point. So therefore, we're going to have mass of the mercury latent heat uh, of fusion for mercury plus mc delta t for mercury. And we're going to go ahead and just put delta t as a separated form. All right. Um, and then for the right side of the equation, we have a combination of both aluminum and water. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, make um, two different terms since they are essentially two different terms. So it'll be equals to negative mass of the aluminum, heat capacity of the aluminum, times the change in temperature from final to the initial temperature of the water aluminum system. And then another minus for the mass of the water, heat capacity to water times the change in temperature, so delta T. Okay, and this term actually is going to be the same for both of these. So that's something helpful. Okay, so we got that down. Um, let's make sure that we have all that we need in order to find uh, L of mercury. Looks like we have the mass of mercury. The heat capacity of mercury is given in the problem. Final temperature is given in the problem. Or it's not, yeah, it is, sorry, it is given in the problem. Uh, the initial temperature is given in the problem that actually ends up being the melting point of mercury because that is the point in which solid mercury was transferred to the calorimeter. So in a sneaky way, they give us the initial temperature of mercury. We know the mass. We know the mass of aluminum, the mass of water, the heat capacity of aluminum and water just by looking it up online. 
we know the final temperatures again, and we know the initial temperature of um, the water aluminum system as well. So this ends up just leaving us with L. So that makes it a pretty easy equation there. So isolating everything, L of mercury is negative mass aluminum, heat capacity aluminum, or specific heat of aluminum, plus mass of water, heat capacity of water, Tf minus T naught of aluminum water system, minus mass of mercury, heat capacity of mercury, T final minus T initial of mercury, all divided by the mass of mercury, which came from this right up here. So you took this, put it on the other side, and then you divide everything by mass of mercury. This actually ends up being, um, and if you want to analyze units, um, that is possible. Um, I wasn't prepared to do that yet, but the units should all play out to where the heat capacity ends up giving you um, a value in joules per kilogram. So this would all be in joules, and then this is a kilogram unit down on the denominator. The uh, final value, if you do the calculation and plug in all the numbers from here to here, would be 11,000 joules per kilogram. And that ends up being the latent heat of fusion for mercury. If you look it up online, it's fairly close.